Hi gang! I'm going to give you the basics on how to read a schematic for anyone new to electronics. If you're experienced with schematics and you have any helpful tips for beginners, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. What do I mean by schematic? To keep things simple for people new to electronics, often I'll draw a circuit like this with little pictures or photos of the parts and different colored lines. This is called a wiring diagram. However, a schematic would look like this drawn with specific symbols and not always laid out like the final circuit. That's what you'll see most of the time. Let's start with a very simple circuit. There's some batteries, a resistor, an on-off switch, and an LED. And of course there are also the wires connecting it all together. We flip the switch to the on position and the LED lights up. Here's the schematic for it. You can see that different symbols represent different parts on the circuit. This is the symbol for a battery or a one battery cell. If the battery has more than one cell, then you'd simply have more of them drawn together. The longer line is the positive side of the battery. Most batteries have a marking on them indicating which terminal is positive and or negative. In North America, the symbol for the resistor is a zigzag line like this. The international standard is to draw it as a rectangle like this. The on off switch is drawn like this. Here it's drawn open or off. If we're closed or on, then it would look like this. The symbol for the LED looks like this. It's a symbol for a diode, but with arrows representing light being emitted from it. That makes sense, since LED stands for Light Emitting Diode. So a big part of learning to read schematics is learning the symbols. And though there are a lot of them, you mostly use only a handful. Another part to schematics is the lines representing the wiring. The schematic can get so complicated that lines have to cross each other. This happens with my crystal radio amplifier. Here's the schematic for it. If the lines cross each other like this, or this, or this, then they're not connected. If the lines are supposed to be connected, then a dot will be drawn at the intersection. There is a way to simplify the lines, and that makes use of a symbol like this. This means earth ground and is negative. Notice that all these lines eventually end up at the earth ground. And in fact they do. There are these wires in the actual breadboard, and here they are all soldered together in the back. Instead of drawing all those lines going to the one ground symbol, we can just draw in the ground symbol wherever needed, and it'll be understood that all those lines end up at the same ground. There are other types of grounds too. For example, in a car, the negative of the battery and the negative of a lot of the electrical components are connected to the car's chassis. That's called the chassis ground, and has this symbol. This is a diode. It allows current to flow in one direction only, this direction. The negative side is this side, if you're used to thinking in terms of electrons, which are negative, the electrons flow in this direction, against the arrow. Conventional current is in the opposite direction, since that's the flow of positive charge. So conventional current flows in the direction of the arrow. Notice that the line next to the arrow corresponds to the line drawn near one end of the actual diode. This is a resistor that you can adjust, called a potentiometer. In my crystal radio amplifier, I use it to adjust the volume. Its symbol is the same as a resistor with a fixed value, like in our simple circuit, but with an arrow pointing to it. Remember that in the international standard, a rectangle is used for the resistor, so the potentiometer looks like this. We can replace the fixed value resistor in our simple circuit with the potentiometer. Since we're replacing just one resistor, we connect to the middle and one of the ends, and leave the other end unconnected. That allows us to adjust the brightness of the light. Notice that this circuit also has some capacitors. This symbol is for capacitors that have a positive side and a negative side, what are called polarized capacitors. For example, electrolytic capacitors are polarized capacitors. They usually have a stripe drawn on one side, like this, or a minus sign, or both. But not all capacitors have positive and negative sides. The symbol here is for a non-polarized capacitor, just two straight lines. These capacitors come in many shapes and sizes, and don't have any minus signs on them. And that should get you started on reading schematics. For more symbols, see this web page on my website. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, Rimstar Org, for more videos like this. That includes one showing my crystal radio amplifier in action, along with step by step instructions to make your own, another showing how to make a Jewel Thief circuit that powers a compact fluorescent light bulb, and one showing my music player based on a 555 timer chip circuit. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up and leave a question or comment below. See you soon!